So my name is Clara Godridge and I teach in the political science department here at UC Riverside. Woo! I see a couple of my poli sci buddies out here. So I want to begin by invoking someone whose writings and whose thought I study and whose voice I think was very much in the background suddenly on what happened here on January 19th. I want to talk about Mahatma Gandhi. And the reason I want to talk about Gandhi is because Gandhi specifically talks about non-violence as a form of dissent. And he tells us how we can use non-violence to refuse to recognize the moral authority of an ex existing regime. <laughs> so the question I want to ask, and the question that I think we should all be asking here together, is what exactly is non-violent dissent? And how do we express it? And Moreover, what kinds of responses does it provoke from those whose authority is being challenged? And finally, how do we think critically and strategically about organizing nonviolent movements to be prepared for those kinds of responses? That's what I want to talk about. And I think turning to Gandhi for answers to these questions can be really helpful. And it's one way for us to think about what happened here on January 19th. So, when Gandhi talks about non-violent political action, he uses a word, he uses a Sanskrit word, satyagraha. And that word means standing firm in the truth, holding firm to the truth. So Gandhi says, when you engage in non-violent action, what are you doing? You are standing firm in the truth and you are refusing to cooperate with untruth or injustice. That's what nonviolence is. So when you act nonviolent, you nonviolently, you highlight injustice, and you also express your refusal to cooperate with it, and you express your desire to change that regime of untruth. That is one of the things that I think was going on here on January 19th. The dissent that was being expressed here on this campus was a claim about the truth or justice of public education. And it was an attempt to actively oppose what was seen as an injustice of the existing system. Now here's the really interesting thing that Gandhi says about how you're actually supposed to express that dissent. He says, the non-violent resistor or protester must be a warrior. Gandhi says, we need willful disobedience, we need open defiance, and we need repeated acts of disruption and provocation that challenge the legitimacy and authority of any given regime. Observe nonviolence, Gandhi says, and defy, disrupt, and make trouble in order to demonstrate the strength of your conviction. So another way of saying this is, troublemaking is the accompaniment to seeking the truth. You want to seek the truth, and you want to actively push for the truth, you have to make trouble. I'm not saying this, Gandhi did, okay? So, here's the other thing, folks, that Gandhi has to say about troublemaking. He says, we don't just disrupt things because we like disrupting stuff. We don't make trouble for the heck of it, I'm paraphrasing. We make trouble, we defy, we disrupt, not only as a way to highlight the injustice that we are opposing, but also as a way to convince our opponent, to persuade with dialogue to convince our adversary of the truth of our claims through our defiance. We're saying this is how strongly we feel and we're going to try and persuade you of how important we think this is. So that's another thing that I think was going on here on January 19th. The attempt to persuade people of how strongly we felt, how strongly some of us held those convictions about public education. What kind of response did it provoke? Notice. The response to that moment of disruption was to declare it unlawful and to declare everyone present criminal for engaging in this act of disruption. So the entire justification for bringing in a highly militarized police force in full riot gear was somehow that the protesters were potentially dangerous. They were threatening. What this means is that when the authority of any system is challenged, its ability to justifiably criminalize nonviolent dissent 
depends on convincing people that disruption equals danger. No matter how many loud proclamations we make about peaceful protest, no matter how much you talk about truth or justice, if you shout loudly and disrupt the business of the system, you are a threat. And that's what justifies the militarization, the, the rubber bullets, the batons, and all of that. So, what does this mean? I think it means that we have to think carefully and strategically about ways to make trouble, to disrupt, to defy and express opposition while pushing back against being criminalized. It means that we need to disrupt the narrative. We need to rewrite the story that says that angry, disruptive troublemakers are dangerous, potentially criminal individuals. We need to figure out how to make our troublemaking disciplined and organized and deliberate rather than just chaotic and loud and angry. And when we do so, we can take back the identity of the non-violent dissenter as a warrior who is motivated by truth and justice and as someone whose disruption and defiance is an expression of that moral commitment. And that is what I encourage all of you to keep doing. Thank you.